right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to do some SketchUp drawings, and we're going to do like a very basic uh, introduction to roof framing. So like the very, very, very basic on the, um, what would you call that, like the theory, and a little bit of how-to. And then depending on how the video does, I'll try to the next time that we actually frame a roof, um, maybe actually frame some little mock-ups that are, are what we're going over today. So enjoy the video. Oh, and partway through, we have a, what would we say, Jordan? What would we describe our little groom's experience? We have an, an attempt by awesome framers at filmmaking, so stay tuned for that. I mean, I don't think we can call it that. Anyway, enjoy the video. Let's do a very basic introduction to roof framing. Specifically, what we are looking for are triangles. Let's start with the plan view. Typically, on a set of blueprints, looking from the top down, the bird's eye view, that's called plan view. Hopefully, the designer or architect has given us everything that we need to know. That is often not the case, but this is not about that. Let's get into it. We just have a rectangle that is 24 feet by 40 feet. Let's go back here. Nice, simple rectangle, 24 feet. We're gonna put a hip on one end and a gable on the other, and the house is 40 feet. This is just a little closer look. So this is gonna be some very basic geometry. If it's 24 feet and all of the roof slopes are exactly the same, they're all gonna be 612 in this case, then we with the ridge would run right down the middle King Common, which is this guy runs down the middle, and we're gonna get into this in just a moment. So at this point, we notice we have a number of identical triangles. Because the slopes are the same, this 12 foot distance over to the center of the ridge is also the same distance back to the King Common. That means that this angle here at the plate, by virtue of it being 90 degrees there, all triangles are sum total of 180. So 180 minus 90 is 90, divided by two is 45. We have four triangles here. Identifying the parts, these are going to be called the king commons. This is the ridge down center, and then these are the hips. Okay, so let's just show you how to calculate on the gable side. This is very easy. We're gonna center the ridge. The ridge would, of course, be up here at the peak of these two triangles. Notice that we have two more triangles that form this gable end. These are right triangles which again means 180 degrees minus 90, that these two angles, the one at the top, the one here at the bottom, are going to be complementary angles. When we add them together, they're gonna to be 90 degrees. So here's the parts that we enter into the calculator. The run will be the horizontal number. The slope, see the 612? We're gonna enter that as the pitch. And then of course the rise is the vertical number. And then the rafter length is the hypotenuse of a triangle, or on the calculator it reads as diagonal. Hey man, can I have some? Look in your bags. You already have some. Groons. It's not a multivitamin, a greens gummy, or a probiotic. It's all three and at a fraction of the cost. And it tastes great. Freeze frame. Hey, can I get some of those groons? Hey man, check it under your seat. Mm. You feel like you don't have time to keep up with your nutritional needs and you're just kind of sick of messy greens powders, multivitamins that seem like they're so compressed and dense, they're probably not really doing anything for you. Then I would like to introduce you to Bruins. You would think that this is just a fruit snack, but it's not. Bruins, superfoods. What I like about Groons is the fact that they are so portable that when I travel, I could just count however many days I'm gonna be gone and I can put these in my luggage. What else is great is these are vegan, nut-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. Like the gummy portion of this is pectin-based, not gelatin. It contains six times the gut health ingredients compared to the leading greens powders. They taste fantastic, it's just eight gummies and as you can see in the package, well, I could just leave them in the van and then I'm never without my nutrition. Groons also supports gut health, energy, immunity, recovery, cognition, and my personal favorite, beauty. So what are you waiting for? Try Groons. You could be as beautiful as I am. Save up to 45% off your order. Just click the link in the description. Ooh, there we go. First try. Yeah. And we'll show you how to calculate that right here. 
Okay, that is the Construction Master calculator, and this is the Pro Trig model. I suggest buying that because it gives you some options, but you do not need it. Let's go through how the calculator is set up to help us frame a roof. Starting at the top left, we have the pitch or slope of the roof. Typically, you would see that called out on the plans as like a 612, an 812, a 1212. The rise is the vertical number, so just think height or vertical. Run is a horizontal number, that's the run. Diagonal, of course, would then be the hypotenuse or the diagonal of the rafter. Hip and valley would be the hipped end. So we really only need two numbers to calculate the rest, and we're almost always going to be given the pitch. So let's just assume a 612 roof. We're, let's calculate the height of our ridge. So if it's just a triangle, let's just say that the total is 24. You write this here. Half of that would be 12, and the slope is a 612. So for every 12 inches horizontally, we go up six inches. Very easy. So we can take 24 feet divided by two. That gets the span. We're gonna assume that the ridge is centered because it's equal pitched on both sides. We enter that as the run. So 12 feet run, six inch pitch. Now we have two elements that are entered into the calculator. If I hit rise, that gives us the six. And of course we picked a 612 and a 24 and a 12 to make it real simple. For every 12 inches over, it goes up. Therefore, for 12 feet, it goes up six feet. Now, what about this number here for the rafter length? Again, all unadjusted for thickness of material. All we have to do is click diagonal, 13 foot five. And if there was a hipped end, we would just hit hip and that would give us 18 foot. The other thing with this still entered in the calculator is if we hit diagonal again, we can hit that additionally. There's the slope of our roof. 26.57, make sure my five doesn't look like an S or a C. And then if I click diagonal again, it gives us the level cut, which is the complement of this. So 90 minus that number would give us the 63.43. So now we have both of those angles. Okay, that is the Construction Master calculator. And this is the Pro Trig model. I suggest buying that because it gives you some options, but you do not need it. Let's go through how the calculator is set up to help us frame a roof. Starting at the top left, we have the pitch or slope of the roof. Typically, you would see that called out on the plans as like a 612, an 812, a 1212. The rise is the vertical number, so just think height or vertical. Run is a horizontal number, that's the run. Diagonal, of course, would then be the hypotenuse or the diagonal of the rafter. Hip and valley would be the hipped end. So we really only need two numbers to calculate the rest, and we're almost always going to be given the pitch. So let's just assume a 612 roof. We're, let's calculate the height of our ridge. So if it's just a triangle, let's just say that the total is 24. You write this here. Half of that would be 12, and the slope is a 612. So for every 12 inches horizontally, we go up six inches. Very easy. So we can take 24 feet divided by two. That gets the span. We're gonna assume that the ridge is centered because it's equal pitched on both sides. We enter that as the run. So 12 feet run, six inch pitch. Now we have two elements that are entered into the calculator. If I hit rise, that gives us the six. And of course we picked a 612 and a 24 and a 12 to make it real simple. For every 12 inches over, it goes up. Therefore, for 12 feet, it goes up six feet. Now, what about this number here for the rafter length? Again, all unadjusted for thickness of material. All we have to do is click diagonal, 13 foot five. And if there was a hipped end, we would just hit hip, and that would give us 18 foot. The other thing with this still entered in the calculator is if we hit diagonal again, we can hit that additionally. There's the slope of our roof. 26.57, make sure my five doesn't look like an S or a C. And then if I click diagonal again, it gives us the level cut, which is the complement of this. So 90 minus that number would give us the 63.43. So now we have both of those angles. All right, so let's head to the other side of the roof because we're gonna put a hipped end on that. 
Okay, so the first thing that we really want to know is the same as those gables. This is our identical, since it's 612 on both sides, the ridge is centered. That means these rafters or triangles are going to be identical as the gable ones. Okay, so those two triangles, we just slide forward. How do we know how far to come back? Easy. Since the span of the roof is 24 feet, the ridge will be at half of that. So that means that this guy has to be identical to this guy. So 12 feet over is center. Well, then 12 feet back is where these are going to intersect. Okay, that makes sense. And remember, because that's 12 feet here and it's 12 feet at the bottom here, then this naturally is a 45 degree. So here's what we have more triangles. This triangle, this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle are identical. This triangle down here, this one, this one, and this one are also identical. Boom, there's our hip. All we're doing is connecting the dot from the peak to the bottom. And because for the same height, the hip has to travel farther, logically the slope would be less than a 612 in degrees. We're going to skip that for now. So all we have to do is finish entering our numbers. The 12 foot run, six inch pitch. We click rise to get rise, diagonal to get diagonal. We hit hip to get hip. There's 18 foot. So now we have another triangle, but this time it's different than the other triangles. That's the hip rafter. Okay, now what about jack rafters? Well, jack rafters are simply rafters that go from the plate to a hip or a valley. In this case, it would be a hip jack. Now, here's what I want you to notice. This is kind of fascinating. We see that we still have another triangle, but this triangle is identical to this triangle. But the length is going to change because it's a jack rafter and it's gonna come from right at intersecting the hip down to the plate. So how do we figure that out? It, well, it's still the same triangle, it's just a shorter version of that triangle, so to speak. We can measure along the plates again. So we notice that this guy is six foot. Now remember, see how this is 12 feet over to the center and then these guys are 12 feet back? Well, because it's a right triangle and it's all equal pitch, then this six feet is also six feet. So that means that all we have to do is enter six foot run, which happens to be this and this six foot run, enter the slope of the roof, click diagonal, and there's our jack rafter length. Now keep in mind, this is all theoretical at this point. There is no thickness taken into account for materials, but this is the foundation for us to understand the math. And then we can get into complicated things and we can make those adjustments for thickness of material down the road. This whole drawing is just to show us a whole bunch of triangles. Starting way back at the beginning, we break it into triangles in plan view. Then those things become vertical. So really all we're doing is we're folding triangles. So we have triangle, triangle, triangle. Those are the same. In plan view, we have four of the same. The hip is different. And then just to summarize, the jack is the same triangle, but then as we move it, let's just move it along, we see how it gets shorter or longer. And all of that really is just a function of the measurement along the plates. Let's identify some triangles. This is just for illustrative purposes. We've got one here. That's a valley. We have one, basically it's going to be very similar because it's also a valley. And we have one that would be somewhere down here. There's a valley. Now here's a broken hip. See all those triangles? And then, of course, we have, if we went way back, so we have all those triangles. And then, of course, not to forget, we have gables. So that's just a quick look at a variety of triangles. But if we break everything down to triangles, it becomes much easier to calculate. And as you can see, I'm a master at Photoshop. All right, let's show you an irregular roof where the slopes on each side of the hip are different but still it comes down to triangles. So this is one of Ryan's pictures. The big question is, why do the architects in upstate New York insist on irregular roofs all the time? There's two triangles, and we have the triangle in the background. So you see the point what we're making is it's all just a series of triangles. And looking straight down at plan view, we see that the irregular roof is still just a series of, repeat after me, triangles <laughs> and of course there's that guy right in the way of the boots 
And so basically all the math is going to come down to learning how to calculate those triangles. And because this is just so much fun, kablam! Okay, so let's say we have an irregular roof, which means that there are two different slopes and they're meeting at a 90 degree corner. Let's say that this is the 812 side, this is the 612 side. So we have a common rafter, the ridge, and common rafters. This is all 612, this is 812. Now in, an, in a regular pitched roof where the slopes are the same, then this would be at 45 degrees. When they're different pitches, then that means that each of these angles that the hip makes with the plates is going to be different. Let me show you two ways to calculate that using the calculator. One is just simply take your slopes, six and eight, and enter six inch rise, eight inch run, click diagonal twice, 36.89 degrees is that angle. If I click diagonal again, 5353.13. So that's one way that you can figure how your, your hip basically skews in plan view. Now there's a lot of advantages to having the trig calculator along with being able to work in feet and inches. Let me show you that. I can take that six divided by eight or six inch rise, eight inch rise. If I divide those into each other and hit convert tangent, I now get this cheek angle again. But I can go even farther. So let's just say take this 612 roof with a 12 foot run. If I go 12 feet run, six inch pitch, I get the same rise that I had before, the same diagonal or rafter length. But now I can go a step further. If I enter the irregular roof, eight inch convert hip valley, now the math will, will figure out these angles for me. If I hit hip again, that gives me the hip length. If I hit it again, I now get the plumb cut. Now I get the level cut by hitting that again. If I hit it again, I get the cheek cut for the jack on this side, 36.87. If I hit it again, I get 53.13. When you actually go to cut the jack, you would use the complement. See how this is 90 degrees? So the angle is 36.89. I would have to use the complement of that here, 53.13. This is 90 degrees. If that's 53.13 and that's 90, add them together and subtract from 180 degrees, and we would get the angles here, 36.89. And of course, our saws don't tilt they tilt from 90, so we would actually set our saw on this side to the 36.89, and on the shallower side, we would actually set it to the 53.13. And of course, if we're actually roof framing, we're gonna just round those to 37 and 53.